Mm. Okay. New mic. I don't know how the audio quality is going to be. But here we are. I have no idea who I'm casting first. I was just out buying this new mic, so I have no idea what it's like. <laughs> um, oh, excuse me. This is the, uh, what am I casting? It's the round of eight. That's uh, quarterfinals. So this is full, yeah, this is quarterfinals. So, we're going to have Newton versus Universe. I've got Angry Americas. <laughs> uh, I've got the Angry American clan. Argy Argene. The 4.3k Zerg versus a 4.7k Terran. This is going to be a massacre. I hope they haven't played one yet. Let's say it's second map. I'm like, what? Have you played have you played already? Um Ugh. I always get like a little like panicky and stressed whenever I just start, because like I'm always worried like I've forgotten something, I'm not doing things right. Uh <laughs> um okay. So this is a best of five. I believe this is a best of five. Okay. First map's gonna be romanticide. To be killed by that which you love. has changed. I'm do I'm doing things good this time. I've I've got things covered. Uh, don't know where the M is on my keyboard. <laughs> okay. In the bottom right hand corner of Romanticide Ellie, representing only himself with the red Zerg pieces, it's the man who invented gravity. And is the reason we can't all fly out, the cheeky bugger I want to explore space. It's Newton. And his opponent, representing the angry Americans, Argene. Oh, Archangel, really, but... Is the man who is everything, the entirety of existence. It's the Blue Terran, Universe. So, um, do... Tell me if the audio levels are weird, <laughs> because I've just got this mic, I haven't been able to do anything with it. So I don't know, I haven't, this is the first test, this is literally the first time I've used it. So 
so I have no idea if it's any good or not. Uh, there's some guy who lives not too far who is um, selling it for kind of cheap um, because he's moving house. He's moving over to Greece, so he's just selling everything. So saw that, saw enough of that. I was like, hell yeah, let's get a cheap, let's get a mic. Finally, don't have to borrow my mates every time I want to cast. Um. This is really annoying to have to like go over to a mate's house and like borrow his mic every time I want to cast something. <laughs> It's like, I can never do, like, voice chats with friends and stuff. Um, it, it also has a camera on it, but, like, I don't know how to get it to work. Because, like, it wasn't doing both audio and camera at the same time, which really annoyed me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. Everything's looking standard as can be. Nothing interesting to comment on at all. Like, just stock standard boring stuff. Um. <laughs> um. Oh, almost lost a link there. <laughs> mm. So, ZVT, pretty much everybody's favourite matchup. Good lord, game start this loud. Um. Three links are slipping out. That's a cute move, slipping three links out when you got queens to defend. Yeah. So it's Hellion opening. Lings are gonna get in and see this. This is, this is nice information to have. It's gonna be a liberator. Hmm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> nice pick off on the tumor there. So it's always fun when you like is playing Terra and you just kill tumors when you're actually trying to kill something else. It's just like nice. <laughs> um. Yeah. So Overlord's gonna come in. So it's gonna be a three racks follow up. Um. Before thirty C. So there should be a strong timing attack coming. With it's gonna have stim, it's gonna have tanks and a bunch of marines and marauders. Okay, liberator coming in, getting a few kills. Can actually shoot down the queen, which is very annoying. And then drones getting roasted. It's a barbecue! Oh. I. This is looking like a tasty barbecue. I have so many drones going down, holy shit. Like. That's. That's enough to feed your whole family. Hell, with these extra drones, you've got enough of a barbecue to feed the whole block. By a neighborhood. Gather round, Marines and SCBs, we got roasted drones for dinner. Oh, damn. This is, this is brutal. 
<laughs> just full. This is such a cute move. Just forcing that little extra bit of damage, and then Reaper dies. Um. So Stim is finished. No medevac, so. That's it's a bit weird. It's this overlord just gets to sit on the pervert pillar because of it. <laughs> gets to just watch everything. So this is this is gonna be really rough for me because all that damage is gonna have. Universe is gonna have a strong push, timing with one one combat shields, a bunch of tanks, marines, and medevacs. And being like brought to even workers. Okay, now Newton's ahead a bit, but not not enough to overcome mules. There's this fourth is gonna die. I don't see any way Newton defends it. Nice little run by setup. I really like this move. It's just good solid play. You're either going to get some counter damage done, or you're going to force reinforcements from the Terran to stay at home. Which makes the push easier to deal with. Okay, Ling's got scared off. Only lost his fourth. That's that's decent so far, considering the damage he took at the start. Um, you know, this is still a really rough spot for Newton. Tanks are gonna siege up. Um, Marines are just gonna start slowly pushing onto the creep, backing away to the tanks and the wings get close. Queen's getting some poke damage onto the Marines, so I. The Lings just cannot engage into this, because whenever they do, the tanks just start firing. Now the tanks are going to move forward, they're still not quite seen to jump, so the Lings are going to jump on top of this. Killing two tanks, pretty nice. Plus one melee, because it isn't quite finished yet. A few banings morphing in. Newton's actually floating 15k, because he pulled all the queens for this. So he hasn't been able to inject, he's on three hatch, so he's not actually able to spend his money at all. Which, this is actually a really rough spot. <laughs> it's not a rough spot, he's just dead. That was that was a lot of workers lost at the start of that. Like, damn, went down from forty-five to thirty-five. I think now it's like thirty-two. Nice. It'd be nice if they could get Game Heart, WCS Game Heart, but I suppose not. Got some cheap ten crown chocolates with me. Some dark chocolate and mint. Very nice. Mm. Okay. In the bottom left hand side of Oxide LE. Representing himself with the Red Zerg pieces, having just lost a game after giving the Terran Dominion a lovely little barbecue, a nice serving of drones roasted on Hellion flames. It is the man who invented gravity and keeps us all chained to this earth, Newton. And in the top right corner, up one game in this best of five. Representing Archangel N.A. It's the Angry Blue Terran universe. Is that... 
Archangel's been um, represented quite a bit in this tournament. I've seen them a fair few times. Fair few players. This is cool. It's cool to see like clans have a lot of representation. We have very few. I haven't casted any of the DOH boys, although I know my Archon partner Denny played a bit. Daniello. Um, I know we should have a few other recurring names in the clan list. I feel like Universe is going to just play the same because it worked so well last game and it is a very safe strategy. And the React is a bit like... No. no. Oop, lose, losing a Ling there. That's not supposed to happen. Losing two Lings. This Reaper basically just killed a drone. I <laughs> just barely didn't lose its life. Okay. You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see some weird shit. <laughs> um, I'd love to see a BC opener. Once in this best of five. Excuse me, Morty. Um... The music is refusing to play. <laughs> I have music enabled, but it's just like, no. You've got to just deal with silence. The sound of Reaper gunfire. That is your music. Mm. Well, that'd be pretty cool. I wonder if anyone's ever tried to make music using just regular sound effects from StarCraft. Like, if you pitch change them and, like... S sample the sounds, like, mess with the pitch and shit, and put them in patterns, like, maybe you'd get something real cool. That'd be funky. I, I love music that's made with, um, weird sources of sound. Like, there's one song, Pack of Rats by Rusty Cage, which is just made with this, literally the instrument he used is a gun. Is a revolver and he like uses the um the bit where you have the ammo in. He actually uses that as part of what makes the sound. So okay. Same build as last game. Three CC, then followed up with three racks. I actually missed red last game, it was three CC then third rack. Third and fourth rack. No, second and third racks. Uh no speak. Are the audio levels good? Can people hear me clearly? I have no idea because nobody's saying anything in chat. I'm just going to turn sound up a bit. Yeah. Uh. Um. Oh, Rose getting it. Ooh. They lifted him by a uh, medevac. That means they will be able to get out easily. Nice. Fair few drones got drones got roasted. This eight, eight kills on these aliens. No, it's just lining up the hellion fire to kill those three tumors there. Oh, he's gonna lose some of the hellions there. Oh, no. oh, I lost the medevac. Oh, okay, not quite as great of a start for universe. Um. Newton is going to be able to just use the fact that the Hellions are now dead to get a bunch of free space. So we'll be able to drone up a bit more comfortably. 
and be out on the map with his things as well, which is going to help a lot. Because, like, Ling flanks are so strong. So, yes, bottling shows us the push is coming now. So, these rocks, they're gonna be nasty if you can't get them down, because the tanks can hide behind it and, like, they reach right all the way up to here. Yep, as I say, Universe just popping out. So now these Lings just cannot get there. Lings in the natural of Universe gonna get some damage done. Marines pushing forwards with tank support. Um, now, has Newton made the same decision this game of pulling all of his queens? No, he hasn't. Lings and Bane's actually jumping onto this push and just crushing it. Holy shit. This is actually a really good position for Newton now. He's up 20 workers. Just crushed the push. He didn't have to pull his queens this time. This music is fucking loud. This music is loud. Okay. There we go. This music reminds me of um, Dragon Age Origins for some reason. I don't know why, and it makes me want to play it. <laughs> I now want to go and play Dragon Age Origins after this cast. I've never actually finished that game, but it's a pretty cool game. Okay, two medevac drop, just gonna play some creep. Lost a few marines for it. Um, I do not quite understand what you're asking, Bus, to be honest. Ooh. Late pickup from Universe, gonna lose quite a few Marines there. This is this is rough. Rough spot for Universe. So he's gonna have to try and find some way to stabilize and get the game to be in an even like position. But these medevac drops are not doing enough. Okay. This drop is good. One meta. This was a two medevac drop. One of the medevacs did get killed on the way in. Uh, that killed off quite a few drones. <laughs> Zug. Newton just pops a full round of drones and it's back to 78. Good lord. <laughs> oh. That's just funny. Okay. Another push attempt is going to come in. These marines just getting surrounded for nothing. The universe isn't paying much attention to his army right now. Okay, so some lings being sent off for another run by attempt up here. I'd really like it if Newton tried to flank more, because flanks are completely broken. I just take a bunch of army and split it off to the right. Okay. Pouncing on some of the units that are out of tank range. Lost resources. I'm actually in favour of the universe right now. So, again we've got this little dance going. He pulled all of his queens. You, Newton, you should have learned from last game. You don't want to pull all your queens. Because now he can't inject. But I guess it doesn't matter if he stomps this army 
early, killing off all the tanks and marines. He's fine. Oh no, these queens are going to get caught out off creep. Brenda. The army of Brenda's moves so slow, he's without force to engage or lose the queens. Neither player really wants to take that fight though, so they both just back off after losing quite a bit. <laughs> So, Lurkers are going to be the play. I don't really like Lurker, Ling, Bane, Hydra. Um, for Zerg versus Terran. Because it's the Lurkers and the Lings. I don't remember who I heard this when they were casting. But it's a bit of a conflict between how the Lurkers and how the Lings work. The Lurkers are a siege unit. But like Lings and Banes want to pounce on their opponent. They they're not ranged, they wanna chase you down. Okay, there's two medivac drop spots this run by. Before it even happens. Creep spread actually isn't too powerful right now for the Zerg. So Universe has done a decent job of keeping on top of it. So ooh, we're gonna have some Vipers as well. Adrenal glands coming in. We've got Cracklings coming. Okay, um, Bass, the clown, uh, what is this fight? Siege tanks and lurkers both sieging on top of each other. Planetary Fortress roasting some lings but getting just bitten at its ankles to death. Um, I don't quite know what happened there. <laughs> uh, Newton saw a weak spot and jumped on it. Hmm. No, it's a good game. Um, so Bass, each um, you you need an invite. Um, each region, the clans are separate. So I'm in the Drunken Outlaws on EU, but on here I'm in um a Zerg Wars clan, which is an arcade mode. So you're gonna need to um ask someone in the uh, NA group of the clan to invite you to the NA side because um, as you see Universe has Archangels NA instead of Archangels EU or Archangels EJ I don't know what EJ is I've seen that a few times Okay. So, nice job of Newton, last game. Uh, tying the score up, 1-1. One, one. So, that was good run buys and a solid clean up of the first push by Universe. So, he... Yeah, put him in a really strong spot, and then he just got into a nice position with the Lurkers, and just had more stuff, I think, to be honest. Right. Light shade. 
Lightshade isn't quite as good a map for the build that Universal Darks game. Because there isn't any really nasty tank spots. Like, you could put your tanks here. You could put your tanks here. Right. If the Zerg sends Lings here, or Lings here, like, you can get good flanks on it. Um, but it doesn't seem like you know, Newton truly appreciates the power of the flank. <laughs> um. Like, he's only really taking fights from one angle. Well, last fight he took from two angles, but I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it was good. Now, this is a interesting, this is an interesting bit of um, map design when it comes to Terran. Is it because, like... Not each spawn position is equal for Terran because of how the add-ons are always on the right side of the. They're always on the right side, so if you spawn in this position, you have to place it here. Otherwise, you've got the um, reactor in your wall. And that's not a thing you really want to be in that vulnerable position. Where did the Reaper go? Reaper's just chilling in the middle of the map, taking a smoke break. He got a kill and he's like, I right, peace, I'm out of here, bruh. I got a kill. I'm good. <laughs> Marauders. Is he going to do a Hellbat Marauder push? Oh my, that he is. Oh, how lovely. This is nice. I like this. He's trying to hide the Marauders as well, like keep them out of the Overlord vision. But you, Newton might still recognize that there's no, not going to be any third CC for a bit. And yeah, he's going to see. Um, there's, there's a... Yeah, he just straight up sees a Marauder. He's gonna know his concussive shell. Okay. So the question is, how does he plan to deal with this? Because, like, this is gonna be Hellbat Marauder. So, like, Lings are not gonna be good. Lings, even if you get a full surround, are just gonna get roasted and toasted. Okay. I was wondering why he didn't uh, convert all of them into Hellbats. So, like, normally you'd kind of want roaches for this, but Marauder's really good against roaches. These queens are just getting burned down. Quite a few of them going down. A few transfusers coming through. Now the the Hellbats are in the mineral line, so they're both killing queens and roaches. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, like, that's not even an all-in, like universe. I could build a third CC behind that. Ah, uh, so Arg E J J A is um the oh fuck me. I forgot scene. I hate it when I do that. I was doing so good. I'd remembered for the other two games. But then I forgot. Oh, that's so annoying. 
Like, people only ever realise, like, two minutes after the game starts, and that game was such a quick one. I'm okay. So... Like... Last game was just a... Marauder, Hellbat, Push with Concussive Shell, and uh, Medivac. Um, Newton just had nothing. He had like a he had a bunch of Lings and some Queens, but the Lings just got burned to death immediately by the Hellbats, and the Queens just keeled over and died. I. <laughs> The Marauders threw a few grenades at them. The Hellbats gave them a nice, soothing fire bath. Uh, the Queens were just like, nope, I'm dead. Blech. So this is the best of five. So if Universe wins this one... As this one done, this series done. But if Newton still has a chance to bring it back. See, I'd love to see something aggressive out of Newton. Because if I were Universe, I'd just do the same thing he did last game. And, like, just hide it harder. Maybe proxy the armory or some shit. No, it's not going to do the same because he didn't go straight into reactor. Oh, he must have went gas first last game. I didn't see that. Because he um, went reactor without a marine. But still could switch in time. Oh, this is cool. The little specifics of builds that just change things. Both players are playing standard. Boring. <laughs> Give us some chaos. Okay, this is just going to be the same build from first game. Oh, those two pair, those two things at the top just lined up perfectly for a single shot from the Hellions. That was nice. <laughs> that was such a specific thing. I noticed such specific detailed things in StarCraft, but I miss, like, I miss bigger, more important things when I play. <laughs> but, like, my worker pairing is always good at the start, but, like, I'll miss some of my build doing it. Because <laughs> I'm paying to so, so much attention to the specifics. I'm like... So... I'm gonna have to... See, how many aliens is this? This is six cars. Got six roomy rooms. Now, Newton's gonna need to try and get the same Ling run by as he's been getting the games before. Universe really needs to realize that's how he lost. The game on Oxide, that was how he lost. 
Oh shit, the car's getting almost completely surrounded, losing two of them immediately to these lings. That's a really nice pick off for Newton. Liberator killing off a few drones though. Like, two drones for two cars is not a worthwhile trade. Oh, some of these lings. Quite a few lings are heading towards the natural universe. I don't know if he's going to try for a run by. Yeah, he is. This forces the cars home. And now, like, they have nowhere really to run, so they can just get overrun by these lings. So that was, that's, that's an interesting move. The lings go in between the base and the cars. So aliens are just forced to run, but they can't run faster than speedlings. <laughs> yeah. That's another ling run by setup. So, the way Newton wins this game is he gets a strong ling run by when the universe does his push. The way Universe wins is he doesn't lose the push quite as convincingly. Quite as hard as he did on Oxide. And he doesn't take serious damage to this Ling run by the... He should know it's coming. Um. We haven't had any really exciting TVZ games, I don't feel yet. I mean, last game was kind of funny. It's been just kind of a eh series for me. So there's no really long games, no crazy games. Goodbye, Brenda! Oh, she actually gets out alive. Um, lots of creep going down. Lings and Bane trying to bounce on these tanks. The tanks actually are a fair bit away from the range. Good Bane connections. This push is just going to get cleaned up. A medevac and five marines escape to tell that horror story. Now, um, no Ling run by actually went in. But because of how convincingly Newton held there, he is kind of ahead. Ling Bane Hydra Lurker. It's a weird composition because Lings want to run in, Lurkers do not. Because Lurkers want to siege. So this. I mean, drop. Okay, only losing one. Ling's getting into the natural. I'm going to kill off a fair few more, uh, Ling, uh, SCVs before Universe notices. Universe is multitasking and map awareness has not been too on point, if I'm honest. This medevac just starting to unload right underneath the spore. Nice. Speed is not his strong suit. Okay, this is interesting. He's now switching into um, double factory mines, getting drilling claws. The thing is, opponents are going lurkers. So I don't think this is going to work out too well for the Terran going mines against the lurker player. Okay, Ling and Bane storming into the third base, not really doing anything, they just ran in and then it was like, nope, never mind. A few of us died, we're gonna leave. We're gonna leave them, them SEVs alive. I 
Why is that Ling Bane force going in? <laughs> Why? Okay. A few Banes get just shot down on the retreat. And I shouldn't... I shouldn't question these players too much. They're better than me. Like, they're racers. It's just confusing. Um... So, my question is, what's the play for both players? Hmm. So, it looks like U Universe is just going to be doing mind drops and trying to stabilize. I actually know, he's ahead in workers. So, it's just going to try and stay safe. A mine shot killed a tank. Oh, good lord. That was nice. Okay, we've got two mine drops coming in. Six mines in total. Lots of army here, though. So these is just gonna... <laughs> kill off the mines almost instantly, but they still get, like, six drone kills. Uh, let's see, second mine drop will be spied in time. Drone pull is good. Only losing four. Only losing four drones to that. So that's good. These five marines are gonna suicide in to kill some Kree. So there's no way these get out. No medevac or anything. Like, they maybe kill a lot. Of nope. They kill two mains. <laughs> Double CC at the same time. Nice, nice. It's an interesting um thing you can do. If you set up a base, even if you don't need it, like... Set up a base way in advance. You fight over that territory when you don't actually need it at that moment. And, like, when you've got it set up, it's so much easier to hold. And you're not fighting over it when you desperately need it. You're fighting over it for the future. Like, you can set up multiple bases at a time. Now, this is something I do all the time. Okay. Big fight in the middle of the map. These, this bio is very clumped right now. Lots of links going into the third. Might even kill the command center if it doesn't lift and get repaired. It's burning down. One command center has to be cancelled. Luck is running in. Gonna burrow. These marines are so heavily overstimmed. Lings at the planetary as well, so lots of run bys going down. This bio ball, it's a little scary, but it's like these medevacs are almost out of energy. So any time they stim, they just cannot, yeah, they can't heal it now. This doesn't end well for Universe. This does not end well for Universe. If he pushes in too far. Okay, he's coming in. Lings and Bane swarming over them. Mine shots kill off so much of the bio because they are so overstimmed. Lurkers clear up the mines. 3-3 three, is three's almost done for the Terran. So right now they are... Even on upgrades. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like so few units here. Small one by force burrowing in between the three bases. These trades really were not good for Universe. But he's got... He's on, what is that? Six bases? It's five. Yeah, it's five bases now. So... He is up in workers over the Zerg. The Zerg has such a big army. Oh, this is actually kind of scary. I'd love to see some lurkers though. Like they really don't work well with not lurkers, uh, ultralisks. They really don't work well with lurkers. 
I wonder what the next tech progression is going to be for the Zerg. Or if this is the army he's going to stay with. Hmm. Planetary is getting surrounded. He leaves it while it's uh, just the. He leaves it at almost zero health. Uh, he's too focused on this engagement. Ah. Uh. Okay, scan will come down. Look, planetary fortress goes down, so now the Terran on four bases. Zerg is on 55 workers. This is a really low economy Zerg. What I'd love to see right now is I'd, I'd just like, not not because I think it's a good strategy move, but just because it'd be funny as hell. Uh, oh, oh. Small engagement happening. Ling, luck is seizing up. Lots of the Banes are stuck behind the Hydras though and can't get in to get the connections they need to make this fight turn out well for the Zerg. Uh, I can't even read this fight. Uh, <laughs> now what I would have found funny is if like a hundred Banings morphed and then just ran over the Terran's army. Damn these lurkers borrow fast. But yeah, holy shit, they killed off a base here. And there is so much economic going economic damage going down against both sides, it's mental. This is, this is going to be really difficult for the Zerg to deal with because he's got a whole bunch of Liberators. But so few Hydra. Again, these Marines and Marauders are just so overstimmed. Mine shots hitting friendly fire. Liberators all cleared up now. A just metric butt-ton of Lurkers. But again, just more and more harassment damage coming down. Another 20 Workers going down. It turns on 31 Workers. Absolutely no bank for either side, so what they've got is... They have to wait on economy to be able to replenish their army. I, I think Universe is kind of just dead. Like, his army is overstimmed. He has no medevac energy left. I'm, I'm not sure what his plan is. Zerg army coming into the 5th base of the Terran. Liberators are gonna kill a few things, but there are so many Hydras here and only like 2 Liberators. So all of these high-tech units are just going down. The base is dead, the base is pushed back. But yeah, Universe GG's. Uh, it's a good game by... Um... Newton, taking it back to 2-2. Two, two. So whoever wins this goes on to the quarterfinals? No, semifinals. This is the quarterfinals we're watching now. Okay. 
So that game was good. I mean, that was was a good game. That was a longer game. Plenty of action. Like. I'm tired. I'm not here. I'm not mentally here right now. I recently, um, uh, a while ago, I had a game, it's Settlers Rise of the Empire. It's an old RTS, I don't know how old it is. Um, but it's, uh, it's a decent game. Um, I used to have it when I was a kid. And I was absolute trash at RTS at the time. Like, I didn't understand RTS at all. So I was so slow on everything. And I just wasn't really good. I mean, I played... I got through a fair bit of the campaign, but I never managed to finish it. And this was back when I lived in England. And I moved to Sweden. And we didn't get to take everything with us, because, like, we could only ship so much... You know, you, you live your life, you have a lot of stuff. You can't really, you can't always take everything with you. Um, so I, I didn't get to take the game with me. and But I wanted to play it. I couldn't find it anywhere. Um... And I, I I had a laptop at the time, but I, I had a CD drive because it was a laptop. But it eventually died. Like it was just shit. <laughs> um, but then, like after it died, I found the a disc for the game at a game shop. As like it was pretty hard to find. It took me ages. Couldn't find it anywhere. Finally found the game. My, the new PC I got did not have a disk drive. That's the PC I'm using now. So I've got the disk for this game that I've wanted to play for ages, that I never got to finish. But it was pretty fun. But I didn't have a disk drive, so I couldn't play it. Um, until like a few days ago, I we have a bunch of we have a few desktop lying around uh, that are just dead. So I took the disc, I took the DVD player bit out of the old computer and shoved it in my new one <laughs> and finally could play the game. So I've cannibalized another PC to be able to play it. Um, and it's... It's kind of interesting, um, now that I'm much more acquainted with RTS and understand it better and I'm generally more skilled at the genre, it's very interesting how different my outlook is on the game, how I, how I think about it, how I play it. Uh, actually, I'm too quick for the game sometimes, like, I'll... They'll be like, oh, you have to do this thing. Like, I already did that 10 minutes ago, mate. I'll be waiting for you to tell me. Because <sighs> I've also played the game before, so I still know a decent bit about it, even though I just had the campaign on this PC. It's interesting how... Oh, So this is going to be the same build, the game that I didn't show. Things are gonna get in here. They're not gonna show the concussive shell researching. So Newton won't know exactly what build this is because this could just be the normal thing until he sees a marauder. I 
But this is going to be that concussive shell marauder build. Except he's not researching concussive shell. Um. Yeah. Anyway, as what was saying like, it's interesting how skill changes your understanding, uh, like how you approach things. Okay, so. I'm not entirely sure what the plan from Universe is, because he's got these Marauders. He's stunning Stim rather than Concussive Shell. He's got a bunch of Marauders. Is he hoping that, like, Newton's going to overreact? So I haven't mentioned it before, but just a quick, like, heads up to everyone. It would be really, if you want to support the stream and the tournament, you can do the match Reno codes and shit. Um, Sniper just put the link in. Yeah, score is 2-2, two -two. I'm just tired <laughs> and a little lazy right now, <laughs> which is not good. Okay, ooh. Newton's Ling run buys have just been devastating to the universe. Oh, they have just been brutal. Calling off eight workers for just a few Lings? Like, ouch. So, universe needs to make something happen. His third command center is very late this game. He's got a bun. He's invested so much into these Hellions. Like, holy hell. How many Hellions is this? He's got 10 Hellions. He needs to make something happen. Like, there are so many Lings and Banes. Like, so many Queens. I don't know if he can. Newton's pulled all of his Queens, though. So, Lings and Banes coming in. No Bane Speed. Another Ling run by getting more SCV kills. That wasn't quite as devastating of a uh, harassment, but still not fun. Oh, can I just kill off that ball? No, Ling's are actually going to get full surround. Universe isn't paying attention at all. Ling's just completely surrounding those 10 aliens. This is really awful position for Universe. He, he kind of just has to bunker up with siege tanks and hope he doesn't get broken. Like, no, there's no, there's no way he can do this medevac drop. He's just dead. Like, he, he just dead. Yeah, he, he has to pull back. He doesn't have any wall either. Like, Universe is solo supply. He doesn't even have the start of a natural war going. Hmm. Finally got his third up. I'm gonna try for a double medevac drop, but they're gonna just fly right over the Ling Bane and it's just gonna be like, nope, never mind. We're going home, boys. Mission cancel. Mission cancel. Okay. Lings and Bane's running in from two different sides. Gonna get right on top of the tanks. Bane's running over the bio, not quite getting the shots they need and they want. Marine target fire was good. Third lifted though, seven SCVs lost. And like almost no army left in the universe. Like 
reinforce and just run in again. I think Newton just kills him. Okay, scan, just checking the base count for the Zerg. Ling, Ling run by, gonna kill off a tank and some workers. I'm gonna stop the fourth base attempt. Uh, Lings and Banes coming in from both sides on these fires. Massive hits. Massive hits on those Bane Lings. Clearing up just the whole Terran army pretty much. And Universe left. Universe left the party. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> G and GG to Universe. Thank you to both of you for playing. I have no idea what happens to Universe after that. And I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. Um... I have no idea who's left. Who's next? Um, let's see, let's see. Um... So I think it's going to be Mechanics versus Luca start next. Um. I don't know though. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. Sniper's been in a thing for no.
Let's see, what's, um, what is, uh, Sniper doing? Who is he casting? Okay, he's doing Fiant. This is... Uh, I'm trying to figure out what it's supposed to do. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to get things to cast because I don't want to sat be sat doing nothing because I'm... I'm shit at filling time. Like, I just sit here quiet, relaxing, and resting in my mind. Because talking takes energy. It takes energy. Uh, <laughs> so we've got uh, Mixu versus Bass. So, Mixu! DOH fighting. So we've got 4.5k toss versus, oh it's a PvP, yeah yeah, so this is going to be mental, 4.5k versus 4.4k. I have no idea what the veto format is. I know it's the best of five. Um... I don't know what the v we're at the um talking about what like, what the veto format is and like none of us know, so I just suggested we do A B and then A B A B C. So like we just <laughs> we're just coming up with it on the spot. We don't know we don't know what we're supposed to do, but like they both were like. Okay, let's do this. It'll work. We're comfortable with this.
Okay. So, first map is going to be Pillars, then Submarine, and then Romanticide. I don't like Romanticide because I can't do Adepts on Romanticide because it's shit for them. Okay, got the entire map order figured out now. Pillars of Gold. Why doesn't Pillars of Gold have any gold bases? Like, it's pillars of gold. But, like, gold isn't in the gameplay at all. Right, Golden Wall. Golden Wall had gold bases on it. So, you know, it earned the name of gold. Um, Pearls of Gold is just a bit orangey. It's not even like a gold colour, it's just orange sand. Um, so, in the top right corner of the gold baseless Pillars of Gold map, representing the drunken outlaws, it's the Teal Protoss player. Mix it. And in the bottom right, representing Archangel Europe Junior Division, as I just recently found out, that's what the EJA stands for. It's the Red Protoss player, Bass. Um, Mixu winning on the skin department. Old Nexus skin is cool. I don't like old, or um, I don't like the classic. Uh, hatchery skin because it's so meh, so disgusting. It doesn't look pretty to me. A stink moves. It's always funny, like when you're not playing, you get to just like look at all the little map details. Like the cactus is here, there's a rib cage there. There's a little like, hill. like what? There's a random rock there. <laughs> Like, you never pay attention to these map features when you're playing. Hmm. So both players just doing the standard two gate expand. Hmm. <laughs> Just talking with um sniper a bit about uh, how things are supposed to be. Um, okay. Both players are gonna open with two stalkers. Like Bass is chronoing them. I don't like chronoing units in PvP. Like I I, I really like going for the economy. Um, but he's got to get aggressive with these stalkers now, otherwise those two chrono boosts are just wasted. Like, unless he's going for a major mind game. <laughs> so if I was Mixu, I'd think my opponent's doing something, because they chronoed. They chronoed stalkers. Then he just goes into. Then he 
Stone Age goes into like two centuries. So, I don't know. Now, Mixer is my clan mate, but I don't actually know what style he plays. <laughs> Because I do not play with my clan mates an awful lot. Um, so, Twilight counts a lot of both of them. Things are pretty similar. Um, Mixer's got the more defensive four stalkers straight away though. So it'll have less sentry energy. Sending a probe out to scout. This is something like, I thought about doing. I just send a second probe to check things. Because there's only 50 minerals. Yeah. And it's good information. So, yeah, this probe's going to see that there's a second base. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really tell much more. So, Bass is... Bass is chronoing his upgrades and his army. I do not know. <laughs> I mean, not much to comment on, really. Hmm. Guess who forgot the scene? I am a dumbass. I'm sorry. I was um jump scared by sniper's face a little because I all tabbed to check my to check the chat of the stream. I saw sniper's face, which I was not expecting. I was like, who the fuck is this? Well, I, di I didn't. I forgot. I had uh, my thing on his stream. <laughs> okay. Both players are playing so similar. Like Bass is just like kind of slower, but also kind of faster. He's got higher economy, <laughs> but his third is slower. His upgrades are slower. Hey, Mixu! I dared Mixu before the game. I dared him to go DTS. <laughs> uh, it was like we DM'd each other a little. <laughs> I like DI just like supporting the clan. <laughs> oh, the Phoenix isn't gonna spot this. Oh, this is beautiful. Mm. So Bass going straight for charge after blink. Ooh, hallucinating a warp prism. That's a fun game move. So there isn't actually a warp prison for Bass. Ooh. So he can't really reinforce here. So, game plan for each player, I think Bass is just going to try and scale up and do economy and then I don't know what his plan to get ahead is. Uh, Mixu taking the proactive DTs. The DTs. Gonna be trying to get them in mineral lines, get some damage done. And that DT is gonna die. Now Bass knows to like, if Bass just stands here, Mixer isn't going to be able to get any damage done. <laughs> no, that's just sad. Those two DTs went in did nothing. And now Bass just knows to build cannons in every mineral line. And he's getting DTs of his own. Honestly though, this is why I don't normally play <laughs> DTs. It's my first tech option. Mm. 
Right now, actually, I'm playing Archon Charge Lot. So you start with Blink Stalkers. And then... You just power on three bases on Archon Charge Lot. And you can just shit out so many units, it's insane. Mixu doesn't have charge, and he's building charge lots. Okay, now Bass is sending two DTs to every mineral line. We'll have to see. Okay. This army comes in it. Like, both of these armies are really similar. I think if Mixu had charge, he could maybe do something. Oh shit. Now Bass's DTs are coming in here and there's no detection. So like, there's just nothing Mixu can do about this. <laughs> that is just such a painful feeling, like you almost want a GG. Because... What can you do? You gotta just buy time. For a new observer to finish. And it really hurts. It hurts your soul. So, but like Mixu is gonna be upper base, so he can still come back. If he just chronos probes for a while, and doesn't lose any more to DTs, he needs to set some cannons up at the gate of his natural. But no, if he sends a zealot here to check for new bases, send a zealot here. And just push here. Get any damage he can. Okay. Okay, so there's two fours. I don't know. Okay, seven DTs. It's gonna straight blink onto the fourth base. And like super bad is gonna be used, but it's used so late. Just killing off those two. So this this puts Mixu even now. Because like yeah, Bass is ahead in workers, but he's behind by two bases. And he doesn't have enough bases to actually make use of his work account. So this is a good position for Mixu. His defensive layout could be a bit better, like just snipe this you could snipe this cannon, honestly. And then just kill the base. Here, like, there's single battery, single sh pylon, single cannon. That's not enough to actually defend shit. Ooh, there's quite a few DTs died there. Let's see, ooh, that is a nasty disruptor hit. Yeah, a fair bit of damage done for me, so. Okay, now the DTs of Bass are coming in. Much quicker shield battery overcharge and probe skills as well to kill off these DTs. I don't think this is actually going to save the base. But actually, no, it will! 43 health left. He lost a few probes and saved the base. Right, that's, that's why you target down the cannon first. Yeah, they target down the cannon or the shield battery, or the pylon. Because you know? then they can't do anything about you killing the base without an observer. Huh? Hmm, Bass actually going up to uh, double Stargate. I'm not 100% sure what he wants to do with those Stargates. But that's going to be difficult to transition if... Mixu's being aggressive. 
Shield Bradley Overcharger does get used, but just gets immediately killed off. The base gets killed off, and these DTs are just going to melt to all these charge rocks. Like, that's not even funny. <laughs> I would say, and then laugh. Uh, he just melts so fast. Okay. It's really, it's kind of hilarious how mirrored their actions are. Okay, we got disruptables coming out, trying to zone each other while pushing the third base. Ooh, that was a sexy blink forward. Mixu jumping on the disruptors. Just the control. That was bloody sexy, Mixu. You beautiful beast. Ch now chasing down the stalkers. Wow, that blink past the disruption nova onto the other disruptors to kill them off. Like, God. That was nice. That was that was bloody sexy. Oh, fat disruption homers onto the workers. But like using like three of them to do that, that's just like a luxury move. And now these DT's coming out, actually gonna make things a little hard for me to keep pushing. The, like, the army count is really low right now for both players. Ooh, a shit ton of DT's trying to kill off this base. And they will ergo just massacre these workers, like... But... So, a base going down for both players. A mix is behind on workers. But again, he's up in a base. Mixer is such a bat bank. Like. Bass is starting to build carriers though. This could be a little scary. Uh, it is only one carrier at a time because his gas income is so low. From having lost those bases. Oh, his DTs. Just blink on the pylon. Blink on the pylon. Or just kill everything. Come on, kill the pylon, kill the pylon, come on! Oh, the zealot's got to finish. Like, these DTs just so strong. Like, yeah, they're really vulnerable, but they deal so much damage. Okay, come on, will they get the base? No, just barely didn't get the base. So... Like, Mixu has to act really fast now. I think he really needs to, like, walk in constant stalkers and just kill fast. But he's seen the... He's seen the carriers, so he knows that he's trying for that tra sky toss transition. And he really needs to just get him dead. And I've seen these workers. Like, uh, tells him that there's a base here. No. There's one carrier here, but like one carrier doesn't do an insane amount. Unless it gets left to do its thing. We get a bunch of DTs coming in again. This base is just dead. Just gets popped like a balloon. And this base gets killed off as well. Like Mixu's killing all the bases, and this is good, but he needs to kill Bass. Like Bass is so far ahead on the Sky Toss transition. He's up two and a half carriers right now, getting him by the red. Okay, killing off that. Uh... Okay, no, this is good. This is good. Yeah, Bass is good. GG. <laughs> I was really well played by Mixu the entire game.
I mean, yeah, I may be a bit biased because he's my clan mate, but... <laughs> <laughs> I dared him to go DTs, he went DTs. <laughs> mm. Who's online? Okay. Alright, Stuck. Bass is Terran. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, I'm going to get Mixu chose Submarine. So I wonder what he's planning for this. I personally really like, like, um, uh, Proxy Stargate and Proxy Robo are really good on this map. All right, Proxy Stargate, not quite as much because it's a short map, so it's harder to defend. But, like, it's fun to do because people don't expect it because it's a short map, so it's hard to defend. Like, you can't go Adept and go Proxy Stargate because you'll just get fucked. Mm. Like last game, last game was like they almost mirrored each other completely. It was just Mixu did everything better. It felt like so he ended up winning because of that. He either did it faster or at a better timing. Um, Bass's first round of DTs, though, did get way more damage than Mixu's did. And then after that, like, he was ahead. Mixu was just faster on expanding. Um. Alright, is this Forge and Twilight were, like, the tiniest bit faster, but I pay attention to that shit because I am highly, I am highly obsessive. <laughs> okay. So, Bass going for the one gate. Scout. Mixer going for the second gate scout. Yeah, I think both players are probably going to play standard, to be honest. Building the pile on that home. I, I disagree with this move. <laughs> because. Hidden pylons are so powerful in PvP. This is a funky pylon position. You can warp things in on the low ground with this. So that's actually weird. Little quirk of that positioning. Ooh. Both players going for adapts. Bass going for Stargate. Um, I think Mixu's just going to try and expand, I'm not sure. Expand before tech. No, he's going to go Stargate as well. Hmm. So they're actually mirrored again for their tech. I don't know if Mixu saw the bass went in the depths. Okay. 
Mixo actually doesn't need to build a shield battery because uh, Adept Shades block Adept Shades, so it could have actually just shaded some of the Adepts in there. And it would have blocked it. Um. Well, losing. Okay, this is this is a really good position for Mick. So he killed one of the adepts, forced a recall, reduced the health of the other. He's going phoenixes against a player going oracle. He has a shield battery in his mineral line. He has quite a few adepts. Like this is such a good position for Mick. So. Like, I, I, Bass is fucked. Bass is about to get just ruined. Goodbye. Oh, kill the adept. The adept has like one health. Kill it. It's just an adept standing there getting free damage because it was left alive. Way longer than it needed to be. Okay. Like, I feel like Mixu could have just killed Bass, to be honest. If he went in with everything. Maybe. But either way, this is a really good position for Mixu because he's up like nine workers. He's up nine workers and he has Phoenixes. <laughs> his opponent has an Oracle and a Void Ray. That's what he built out of his Stargate. I don't get why players are building Void Rays as a defensive unit out of the Stargate. Goodbye, Prophob. Yeah. So, Twilight for Mixer is very late. I don't see how Bass comes back from this unless he does some weird uh, stalker all in. Hmm. Okay, no, he's going charge first. Hmm. Like, there's no way for an Oracle to get as much damage as these Phoenixes have, and that the Adepts did. Bass just is not having a good time with these phoenixes to be honest. Go on, pounce on that void, right? Yeah. Okay, Oracle's gonna come in here. Yeah, one, two, three, four. How many probes does Oracle kill? Five. That's how many. Um. Yeah, I think going the three, going up to five gates before expanding is just the right call for Mixu here, because he can either be aggressive with it or he's going to be defending aggression from Bass. But obviously he's scouted it because he's got for Phoenixes. Yeah, he's got Phoenixes just flying everywhere. So like, if he just matches his opponent's gateway count, expand when his opponent does. Okay, okay. You see, now that his opponent's trying to expand, so he could go for an expansion himself. If he just keeps an eye on it. Alright. This pylon is good by Bass, because like, there's no way he gets a prism to survive against five phoenixes. Constantly flying around. So having a gateway and a pylon for fast warpins is pretty smart, in my opinion. There's no other way to get the reinforcements safely and consistently. I think Mixu should try and get a fourth base though. 
Or third base either, even. This boy is going to try and go into the main to like do some kind of multi prong shit, but it's just going to get caught by these Phoenixes. Goodbye, Void Ray. Oh no, these Immortals and Stalks are all in front of the charge lots, so they're not actually doing anything for Mixu. Like, Buss's charge lots are actually getting to do damage, but Mixu's aren't. And he didn't hold on to a shield battery overcharge. So, it's the way Mixu's taking this fight is actually really bad. But he's still going to win anyway, because he's so far ahead economically. Mm, DOH fighting. DOH strong. DOH are gods. <laughs> you, can, you can just hear the clan pride in me. I love my DOH boys. I love my DOH boys, they're good lads. Strong clan. Come on, is Mixu just gonna 3 0 him? <laughs> so, romance aside, adepts aren't too good on this map because, like, they're so easy to catch and kill. Um, hmm. I really like, um, Proxy Robo right here, or right here, because you can just like walk across here and flank with the Immortal and walk up the ramp. If the uh, opponent tries to position their Stalkers here, um, all right, pro Proxy Robo is just good on any map where there's no ramp into the natural, because then you can just really just kill off any units that are standing there. Like you can you can deny the natural so easy. Like the only thing I really struggle against is, with it is Nexus first. Because they can get shield batteries and battery overcharge so quick. And you're really relying on denying that natural to get ahead from it. I have a feeling Bass is going to chrono or proxy a Stargate fairly close to Mixu's base. Hey, 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 hey! What was I saying? What was I saying? Oh no. Is he going to drop a second pylon? Yes. <laughs> oh. That. Pylon is going to be really late for a Stargate. But it's going to be really hard for Mixu to tell. No! 
no, he's boxing a Twilight Council. Oh, come on, Bass. Ghost scummiest of all scum and proxy a DT shrine and like a gateway or three. I'd love that so much. I want to see the tears. Let, let me see the tears. Mix is going sitar again, so it could what? Well, depths are fighting. Yes! Well, Mixu's adept here is gonna die. But, okay, so Mixu's going Stargate has no scouting of his opponent's base. And he's going Phoenixes. Bass's DTs could actually get some work done. Okay, he has two. So the only worry for Bass is that the Phoenixes and Adepts are going to get a lot of damage. That's the only thing he's really scared of. But Warping, you, know, you can get five Stalkers for when this hits. That pylon does not survive. Uh, that pylon just gets killed. Uh, it does it does finish though. And Bass warps in three DTs. This is GG. <laughs> this is just GG. Like, Mixu has to chrono out an Oracle and catch all three DTs with it. Like, I think Bass shouldn't, I think Bass should just get it. It's GG to Bass. Well, the thing is, you need to get scouting with that adapt. To know whether you need to go Oracles or Phoenix. Right. I think the build Bass did was just a counter to Mixu's, to be honest, because Mixu can't really scout it. Um, no, there's nothing he can really do. To scout it coming. Because he needs to get into the main base and see that there's no tech and then go scout around the map. Or he needs to go blindly oracle. <laughs> um... I think the only way Mixu could survive is if he surrounds the Stargate in um, probes so the DTs can't kill it and then he just chronos out an oracle. Like if you just like right, grab a bunch of probes, right click on the Stargate and then just hold position. The DTs can't attack it. Um, no DTs have to kill off probes to get to the Stargate. And then you have to rely on the fact that your natural is going to be quicker and he's got stuff invested in tech that is kind of weak. If you know it's coming and you have detection. No, it is, it is a difficult thing to deal with.
I have no idea what Bass is doing with this pylon. I have no idea what Mixu is doing. I mean, Bass tricked Mixu into thinking he was doing, um, Cannon Rush. Oh, 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 Mixu's proxying a pylon. I'd love to see a proxy robot or proxy void race. I think from the gas we're going to see either proxy gateway or proxy robot. Let's see, proxy robo, Mixu, my boy. My boy, my boy. So it's not really going to matter that he has a three wide hole here, then. Because he's just going to be aggressive, so adepts aren't going to get in. <laughs> anyway. So, I'm planning if a mix is probably going to be just a nine natural, because that's all you can normally hope for. He's building sentries after this. This is interesting. I've never seen this. This isn't how I play Proxy Robo. Because you want you want the Stalkers, because that's what gives you power. Oh, okay, why is he building a pile? He's building shield batteries. I'm a little confused there. You don't need these shield batteries. Like, your unit counts just higher. Your unit count is just higher, so you don't actually need these shield batteries to hold the low ground. What you need as Mixu right now is to get your natural up. Because that's where your advantage is going to be. Because Bus just gets the right tech and then pushes. And you can't actually stop him. Like, Bus is gonna get higher tech than you. And he's gonna push you out. Um, when he gets the right tech that pushes you out. Unless you one base all in. That's the only way to match Bass's tech, is to one base all in. And if you don't, you're going to get pushed out and then you're going to lose your robo. This is so much invested into this position. Right, Mixer now has to break Bass. We'll get a lot of damage. And honestly... Mixu can't push up the ramp. There's still another two force fields. And there's shield battery overcharge, but that's been used. That should not have been used to save one sentry. Because now Mixu just waits. And when it's over, he just pushes up. This is such a weird way to do this, Mixu. I love it. No, this feels so stupid. Okay, so it just pushes up now. Like, what? I think Mixu's just gonna get a fuck sort of value here. You need, okay, Disruptor's gonna come out. We're gonna have to see how well can Mixu micro against this Disruptor. It's just rubbed the shot. Okay, that's that's a lot of damage. These robos need to die. 
Okay, probes are being pulled. Okay. Boss is dead. GG. <laughs> Mixer just has to play this right. Ooh. I guess it's one immortal to one immortal now. Okay, so Bass can still hold this. But, okay, Mixu, will it get good disruptor shot off? Oh. Oh, that's disgusting, Mixu! That's so much damage. Mortal's gonna be chased down now. Gonna be forced to go back. This disruptor shot's gonna get a few stalkers. But the disruptor and the immortal get picked up in the prism. We have another disruptor out. Ooh, eight, nine probes go down with that. Oh. This is disgusting. Mixu just dropping more shield batteries. Okay, losing one of the disruptors. And it saves the immortal. Ah, uh, Bus actually shot his own Nexus with the immortal instead of killing his opponent. Instead of killing Mixu's immortal. Alright, Bus has like no workers left though, so there's nothing he can do. Mixu just like micros a bit. Like, Bus can't afford anything. Because his workers literally weren't mining at all. Oh my lord, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was disgusting. Okay, so that's the second series of the Elite Quarterfinals. Um, let's have a look. Um, Sniper's still on Fiant versus Junio for the series. Where's Fiant? I, was, I should have Fiant on my friends list. Okay, they're actually on NA. Um, okay. So, next we should have... Who do we have? Let us see, let us see. It is time. It is time for Mechanics versus Lucas. Are you ready to rumble? Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
I think that, that last series gave me a bit more energy. Like, I'm a bit tired, a bit low on energy. So, like, first series I didn't really cast too well, I don't think. But I'm feeling a bit better. I'm feeling a bit more upbeat. Okay, Lucas's PC decided it wants to update. Hmm. So, in the pro side of things, Fiant versus Junio, they're going 2 2 right now. Uh, and I think Junio just lost because Fiant just cleaned up a 640 tank marine push. Uh, there are Banshees. Actually, they were going home. They were going to do a RAS, but. He decided against it. Um, so Fiant might and should end up winning that. Uh, I didn't see what happened before, but <laughs> but like, Fiant's been playing a lot against uh, Fighting Frog. He GM toss in my clan. Very weird way to play. F Fighting Frog has a very particular way to play the game. Like, he doesn't follow the meta, he makes up his own shit, and it works. <laughs> One of my, um, the guys in the American, in the clan I'm in, in Americas, is asking me what the fuck I'm doing online on Americas, because I'm never on Americas. Um, <laughs> I don't see him incredibly often, because I don't play the arcade mode as often. Okay. Okay, we're heading over to Europe, apparently. Thought we were going to be Americas for this series, but no. Okay, so 4.8k Zerg versus 4.9k Terran. So we're going to have a high level ZVT now. Both players almost 5k. Um, small update on Genio versus Fiant. Um, Fiant's up like 20 workers, but he's behind a fair bit on army. And Genio's trying to get some good pushes together. Um, so if Junio can get a push to work, he'll be in a good spot. Otherwise, Fiant's got a strong economy, so he should win. So he should be in a good spot. Loss of Lingbane Hydra. Out of a roach opener, for safety.
So this is, this is going to be pretty cool. <laughs> Got 4.8k versus 4.9k TV today. Peak StarCraft. The matchup. So, in the bottom right-hand corner of Lightshade Alley, representing the Berserkers clan with the Red Terran pieces, it is Lucasdart. The boy's been going hard recently, and he's, like, really gone good. It's fucking impressive. And his opponent, in the top left-hand side of Lightshade Alley, Using the blue Zerg pieces and representing himself and the Zerg swarm, it is mechanics. So we'll see who has the stronger mechanics. And the mechanics strong with him. Um, I forgot to change scene for introductions. Fucking intellectual. I swear I have an IQ above 90, guys. I swear. <laughs> I just forget things. I swear I have a high IQ. I am an intellectual. There's some really funky shit you can do with your voice. I, I mean, I've done it before on the stream, I've talked about it before, but like, it's just always funny to me. Vocal fry, and, um, like, metal growls, and the grumbly voice you can do. <laughs> uh, you just make your voice, uh, voice go like this, it's funny as hell to make. <laughs> it's, like, so cool what you can do with your voice, and learning to control the, the way it sounds. I don't know. It's a weird thing. Weird topic, but it's fun. So, the links came out a bit late, so... Mechanics got a few extra mining rounds from it, but you also had to build an extractor. So I don't don't quite know if that was worth it. Um... Gonna... Lucas trying to get the tumor actually kills it and gets out with the Reaper alive. Very nice indeed. Oh, I have no idea how you can watch the pods pass. Um, so, almost gets the creep tumor a second time. It's left on like five health. But he does lose the reaper this time. I think this is a build, this is the same build that um, you was used in universe, the universe series, the first series. Um, the Hellions and the Brez. These Hellions getting surrounded by these Lings that are very good Ling control. So actually going to kill off a Hellion really early, which is really annoying. 
Okay, I need to copy this build from the Terran for when I play Terran. So this is actually really cool. Really good. Like, I love off racing. Like, I love Terran and Zerg. Terran and Zerg are such cool races. Like, Terran, you can, you get to, like, do so much aggressive shit. And, like, fly around with medivacs and bio. And the marine printer goes brrrr. But, like, Terran versus Terran and Zerg versus Zerg are AIDS. I hate them. More than I hate Protoss versus Protoss. <laughs> um... Look, I don't leave it. I just play really weird in Terran versus Terran, and I just am um, sad when it's Zerg versus Zerg. Liberator got a few kills before getting picked off. Hellion's getting almost surrounded, but not quite. And then getting killed off by a few queens. The Zerg race is a matriarchy. It's ruled by queens. There either are no males in the Zerg swarm, or they're all the fighting units, like the Ultralisks, the Zerglings. For some reason, the Hydralisk strikes me as feminine as well. <laughs> Which is stupid as shit. The Overmind used to be masculine, I think. But like now that Kerrigan leads the swarm, and it's all brood mothers, the swarm is just a matriarchy, guys. <laughs> And so are the uh, Nerozim right now. Um, with Vorazum. I, I, I really I really like when like fantasy races have matriarchies instead of patriarchies. It's just funny to me. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, they're aliens, so they don't do the way they don't do the things the way we have been doing it for recent history. Um <laughs> Because aliens, they must be different. These overlords just flying around getting so much information, but also just losing their lives constantly. <laughs> um, <laughs> gonna leave mechanics a fair bit supply blocked. And another Overlord bites the dust. Ah, dum, 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 dum. These SCVs are dying. In Lucas Snuffle, they're going to die, and that's a lot of damage. <laughs> um, <laughs> good focus buy from Lucas on these uh, Banes, although he lost a fair few Marines. Like, this is not a good position for Lucas right now. He's down so many workers. He's not trading the most efficiently. So this one little marine gets left behind. That's that's awful. That's nasty. One marine gets left on the ground while the rest are in the air, and he's just like praying and hoping that he doesn't get picked off by the Brenders. Okay, so we've got two tanks with this push, and um, just a bunch of marines, no marauders. Um, mechanics has Ling Bane, 70 workers, 44 army supply. Uh, Lings are gonna get a bit of damage onto these marines, kill off quite a few of them. Two queens are gonna pop like feckin' balloons, filled with blood and guts. These veins are balloons filled with acid. Ling Flank's gonna kill off two tanks on the back, not only one. Good veining connections are gonna reduce the marine numbers, but I don't know if it's enough. Uh, hmm. It's hard to say. But reinforced streaming across the map will make this push harder to hold for mechanics. Plus two carapace is almost done. But not going to be in play for this fight. So upgrades are even for the moment. This fight goes out long enough. It'll be good for mechanics. Because he'll get plus two carapace. 
But no. Are these re reinforcements being pulled back? So Lu Mechanics held the first wave, only losing his fourth base. Um, he is behind in economy right now, though. By my calculations, he is behind in economy. <sighs> um, a bunch of lings are going to stream into the third of Lucas. There aren't a lot of reinforcements here, actually. Natural is going to get walled up again with the supply depot. Um, quite a few SCVs going down. The lings will escape now. So these lings can go back for another round of harassment. Mm. Triple tech lab. Okay, and he starts producing marines. <laughs> Oh. You build like three tech labs and then you start building marines. It's like, what is the point? <laughs> These are the most useless tech labs I have ever seen in my life. And this two medevacs of bio is going to get completely decimated. I mean, come on, Lucas, please pay attention. These two forces just walk right past each other? Okay, there we go. Okay. We have another push, and I am zoomed out. I have been zoomed out for quite a while now. Because information is up. These Banes running over, Marines having to stim away. Just barely able to outrun the Banes. That Queen? That Queen's life mission was to lay down those crew tumors, and it was going to do it whether it died trying or not. You have to admire that dedication from that queen. It was going to put down those creep tumors or die trying. <laughs> These lings coming in for a run by. No reinforcements here. A few marines. The supply depot can't be raised, so those marines will get killed. Some of them will. Lings will get a fair bit of damage done. Lingbane Hydra. Trying to engage, but starting to back off. But the thing is, like, Mechanics doesn't need to engage here. If Mechanics just holds off, sets up a flank, and just delays as much as possible, he wins this next fight. Yeah, there we go. This is what I wanted to see from, um, in the universe games. Just these nice flanks make it so much harder for the Terran forces to actually win the engagement. Bane's not quite getting the value they need though. All these reinforcements, three extra tanks. Five tanks in this fight now and quite a few marines. Lucas is down in SCVs, but he's up so much army supply. This push is going to be really difficult to stop. But these marines... Marines got surrounded by Lings, so some good Bane connections happen. But these Bane Lings are not going to get a finish up. Mm. One bane does connect, put a lot of marines on red health. These medevacs are starting to get low on energy, so it's difficult for them to heal up the marines. Alright, uh, just a bunch of tanks left behind. So much focus on these marines, the tanks haven't been moved forward to the Arve. Natural base four mechanics all dies, down to three bases. Marines starting to push up into the main. Reinforcements still trickling down, more tanks. And Marines coming. Marines are in the main now. In between the two. In between the main hatchery and the macro hatch. I'm going to just gun down these Hydras. Very well played by Lucas. That was a beautiful game. Absolutely loved it. I saw the first one. Yeah. yeah. That was beautiful. That was absolutely lovely.
So that was, that was a really nice game. I really enjoyed that. So much action. That push was just cool. It was a nice push. Lots of play, lots of stuff happening from both players. The Ling harassment was really good from mechanics. He got so much damage. Um, we'll have to see. These two players are a bit more high level, so we should see a bit more build variance. Um, I'd really like to see some muta play. Because muters are fun. Muters are a fun unit. I never play muters myself though. I always play like Ling Bane Hydra Ultra. And I sometimes get Viper Corruptor if like the Terran goes libs. Oh look at that, he's got a little He's got the um Marine decal. The fat boy. Is it just me or does this hatchery look off position on the mini map? But it isn't off position at all. <laughs> it's because of like the little grey stuff. That's very weird. So Lucas Dot stayed on three bases for quite a while last game. It was very aggressive. Was this a hatch first? I have not been paying attention. This is a hatch first with roaches. So I have no idea what's going to happen. I think it's um, oh that SCV getting surrounded. That was such a buggy animation. So yeah, Lucas Dart knows that this is coming. He's looking around for some lings, I think, trying to get some damage before any actual engagement happens. There's no Ling speed started. It's just straight roaches. So he's gonna go for like four roaches, uh, five roaches. And four Ling, so he's gonna... I don't know what's gonna happen here. This is outside of my knowledge of TVZ. This roach skin is cool though. So right now, Lucas is ahead. So Mechanics needs to get a bit of damage done here. I'm gonna engage onto this bunker. Bile is actually gonna hit his own roaches. He's gonna just focus fire down his SCVs. The Ravager does get killed off. His roach is moving just straight past the... Um, Moving straight past the bunker to hit the SCVs. I don't think that was enough damage, honestly. He needed more than that.
Hmm. I really have no idea what mechanics was trying there, to be honest. That was a weird push. But we'll see. So, got Cloak Banshees for Lucas. And gonna be two extra. Two extra Raxes, third CC. Second Banshee out. Let's just swap, aren't I? Okay, like, Overseer. Both of the Banshees dying without getting much done. So that actually wasn't fab for Lucas. That was a nice battle shot, picking out the tank. <laughs> that battle shot though killed off his own overseer. This other tank is gonna die. Base does get killed. Actually does get killed. There's so many marines here though. I don't know. Lots of road driver drive. Going to pick off. This means everything's forced to go home. This tank's just left here. There's no way for this tank to get home. That's sad. And that tank is as good as dead. Um, another tank sieging up, but it's going to get bailed down. So there are no tanks for Lucas that I'm playing off. So here's another one, but no Ravagers left to do anything to that. Nice, cute little uh, medevac micro meant men that couldn't really get any damage onto the tank earlier. There's so many creep tumors here. This is such a cancerous spot. <laughs> so much creep tumors. It grows like a cancer. There's absolutely no creep spread here though. Oh. 
soaky marines, so many roaches. If the marines fight outside of tank fire, it's so easy for the roaches to just overrun them. Ravage is going to get files down and try and snipe off these tanks. But the tanks dealt so much damage, now there are so few roaches left, the marines can overrun them on their own. Brenda's starting a little bit of a civil war amongst each other, a bit of uh, killing of their own kind. Random tank just sat out there. Uh, doing nothing. This is so much action, like, the lost resources tab is so big for both players. So few workers have gone down though, it's just been constant fighting and action, I love it. Wow. Just wow. To both players. Uh, this has been a really fun series. Uh. Like... These two players are giving such entertaining games. so much action the, the, the first attack was really weird from mechanics of the last game I, I have no idea what timing he's trying to abuse
Um, sorry, I'm a bit distracted, to be honest. Ugh. Hard to focus. Right now. Oh, that overlord's gonna die. If mechanics isn't careful. Um uh, Mechanics was almost ready for it. It's a bit supply blocked, but it's not gonna do too much, I don't think. Gonna have cars opener. Gonna go vroom vroom. I don't really know what to say right now, like, everything's just standard and I don't have... I'm a quiet person. Like, unless, until you get me talking, I don't have much to talk about myself. So I, I just stay quiet and wait for people to ask me stuff. So, um, I really don't solo cast too well because of it, I don't feel. You know, we be chilling here. That's that hellion. <laughs> Two health on the Hellion. And now it's got zero health. Mm. And now the rest of them are dead. Um, I'm gonna just dark. It's, it's two O, isn't it? Yeah. Four more cars. So two eBay's going down. Stim halfway done. Third CC almost done, and two extra racks. Is. That's up to three racks. The road are gonna kill off two workers and then just larvae. There's a really stupid, funny style you can play in TVZ if you're like playing against someone much worse than you. If you play Mass Liberator Mine, you can kill all of their units and constantly kill their larvae so they can't build anything. But you can never kill their buildings, except with SCVs. <laughs> it's like you just make it so they literally can't play. It's funny as shit.
Hmm. And this game is really even so far. Okay, double meta back drop. Gonna come in. Plenty of things and things to clean this up though. Um, a lot of links getting into the main though. Gonna be able to get some damage done. But reinforcements, the rallies will just clear that up. Oh, we have a spire, ladies and gentlemen. We have a spire. Lots of lings here. Eating whatever it is that Marines shoot. They don't quite shoot lead, do they? That's a cool little trick by Lucas there. If you pull all your SCVs to one of these mineral patches that's encased on two sides, the lings really cannot do any damage. Hmm. Hmm, so these Ling Rumbas aren't getting a lot of damage, using a lot of Lings for them as well. And this push has killed a lot of creep already. Good pre splits. Except the veins just come in and the bio doesn't uh, kite at all. So we've got just a few meters out so far. 14. So these muters are probably going to try and go around the back and snipe off reinforcements, snipe off the tanks. Lots of veins flooding in. Absolutely wiping out this bio, good lord. And these muters can just clear up the two tanks before the bio comes in and just scares them away. So a few banes get caught morphing. These muters are just cleaning up reinforcements as they come in. Our two tanks are in a medevac. That might get killed off by the worm glaives. I think that's what they're called. The muters. That was, that was a smart move. Boosting the tank medevacs just before so that they gain a bit of speed and don't get hit by the splash. There's so few marines here that these mutalists don't really have much uh, to deal with until they all get wiped out. Mechanics really is not being particularly careful with these mutalists right now, like, good lord. Oh no, the medevac nearly got picked off by those meters, nearly got spotted. Okay, Ultralisks, that's interesting. Ultraling Bane Muter. That's, that's normal, isn't it? I think that's normal. Still cool.
There are some units which to me are just really cool. Like the the Colossus and like Stalkers and Immortals are just cool units. And High Templar as well. Uh, Ultralisks are cool units. So are limbs. Um, Marines getting absolutely just surrounded. These medevacs are all so low health. Mine shots coming out onto the mutilisks might actually be doing more friendly fire damage to these medevacs. Um, so much Ling Bane, these medevacs are forced to lift. Mutilisks in the air gonna hound them down. What are these liberators doing? It just sends them off. Like, fly right over a queen. They're just flying across. <laughs> They're gonna siege up at different bases, but flying right across creep and overlords. And, like, straight into mutilists. Like, what? Chitinous plating is on the way. Uh, it's adrenal glands research. No. Cracklings are not in play yet. Well, those creep tumors just got murdered. Okay, how many mutas are we on? 20 mutas for the Zerg. Plus three, plus three. Ultralisks starting to be produced. Um, Are you still fasting? Sorry, I had to mute my mic there, uh, because family needed to talk a moment. Um, what is going on? Base going down for the Zerg, getting overwhelmed by Marines and Marauders, whilst Mutalisks are killing off this mass expansion plan. The Terran City planners were like, we must expand the great city, and the Mutalisks were like, no, how about not? Three expansion plans not finished yet. Thor getting almost killed off by Lings and Banes. Quite a few Marauders here. These Mutalisks. <laughs> it's just Marauder Mine here. Nothing to fight against these Mutalisks. Okay, Thor pops out. But if you magic box it, the Mutus won't clump up. Okay, these Ultralisks are now going to overwhelm the Mute. Marauder Thor. Two expansions finished, but two got killed off. One, I think they got cancelled. A 
It's just random bits of creep spread that's here. <laughs> I find this funny. There's like all the creep here got killed, but this bit didn't. Um, okay. Thor so gonna get pounced on by these mutilists. Not pumping up, so not much damage will be done to them. Gonna get a few shots onto these SCVs, kill off a few extra ones before flying away to avoid the marines. Lings are gonna stream into the third of the Terran. Mutilists again gonna just keep pressure here. Lots of work is going down. Lucas darts down to 30 workers. There's just so much action going on. It's lovely. It's beautiful. Okay, Lings have crack now. The little crackheads are running about. I'm still zoomed out. <laughs> so many Marauders. What? Oh, this is Marauder Thor Medivac. <laughs> so this base is getting rebuilt. This base is set up for the Zerg. Um, Ling's gonna get a few kills at the fifth base location for the Terran, but they're gonna get killed off. <laughs> Random CC out there. Hydralist then started. Hydralist. It's these tech switches from the Zerg, I swear. So I think he's just going to sacrifice all these mutilists now and just get as much SCP damage as he can. Uh, meanwhile, he's just fixing the creep spread that got killed off by the pushers. Medivac's almost getting killed off by the mutilists. Oh, they're moving across the dead space. Oh. 23 to 66 workers, down 80 supply. Okay, all the mutilists do get killed off now. Like, one medevac with literally one L. Gosh. But now Lucas Dar's gonna try and push across the map, but he's gonna have to deal with a massive Ling Bane Ultra Hydra. When the Hydras do come into play. Okay, Vipers are here. They're not really going to be able to do much except Blinding Cloud, though. Ling's streaming right over the bio. Uh, Parasitic Bomb kills off the only two medevacs remaining, and Blinding Cloud means that like, Marines and Marauders can't shoot anything that isn't literally on top of them, which is right where the Lings want to be. GG! This series, this series, so fast paced, so high action, I love it, it's beautiful, this is what I want to cast. Okay, they forgot Game Heart. You love to see that as a caster when like they make sure they have Game Heart. It's just so nice to have WCS Game Heart on. These players, these are two good, solid players. It is so fun to watch them play. Absolutely love it. <laughs> hey, Fiant joined the stream. Pong. How did the games go, mate? I didn't get to see the last of your games. Okay, show them on the pencils. I wasn't getting any pinfight there.
This is a beautiful series. So, 2 1. If Lucas, our red turn in the top left, wins this game, he wins this series. He's been playing really well. Both of them have been playing really well. It's so high action, so fun to cast. Mechanics, Blue Zerg in the bottom right. He's looking to turn this round. He won last game. The Mutalisks did not so much work. Uh, that tech switch at the end was a bit weird. Very curious. But I liked it. It didn't end up doing much. No, I just didn't come into play, but it was nice. Nice, nice idea. Because Lucas was investing into Thors and Mines, which Hydrosks are good against. So if the Hydrosks had come into play, the Thors and the Mines would have been kind of useless. I want to see something weird. I mean, I always want to see something weird. Weird is fun. Oh, one link does get picked off. Drone almost gets picked off as well, but that should just be made into a spore crawler. Reaper isn't going to chase it down. Just getting any damage it can, hoping to turn that into drone kills. On the mini-map, the CC with the Overlord on top of it is a red square with a blue square inside of it. And it's kind of funky looking. So this is an interesting base location to me, because like it's so exposed, like it feels, and it's more forwards, but like it kind of works for Zerg because it is an open space, which Zerg does like. It's interesting how like Protoss would rather take this fourth because you've got that choke going into it that you can like do good storms and get good colossi shots through. Game Lucas asking for a quick pause.
Okay. These queens are going rather far off creep. They're moving really slowly. Which is... They've actually been pulled very far away from the mineral line where this liberator's going to siege up. So this, this queen's actually going to get killed off. Now this mineral line is just completely unable to be used. It's actually very good positional play by Lucas Dart here. Now he's... Ooh, Hellion's just barely getting into the natural. I think this is going to be a real barbecue. Eight workers down so far. He's got to cook him for the whole family. Drones here, drones there, drones dead everywhere. There's enough roasted drones for everyone to have an absolute feast. Oh, this is brutal. 17 workers. I want to see Lucas do a strong timing after this and just ruin his opponent. So Dim will be done soon, but he won't have 1-1. One, one. <sighs> That, that Overlord popped so fast. That's a late layer. Ling set up for a run by. This is follow up push is going to be very difficult for mechanics to deal with. This is war is good. It's gonna make it hard for these things to get much of any damage. Walls are actually really strong. I have recently started like adding walling off bases into my play. Even as like a Protoss, like on this map against Toss and Zerg, I wall here. And it's so strong because that base just becomes un impossible to harass and really difficult to attack. Okay. So tanks sieged up, plenty of marines spread about. Lings are being pulled home, setting up a run by. Five drones going down before they get pulled away. And now the, all the lings and banes are going to swarm in. Not many coming from the behind, but banes running over these marines. Tanks almost get cleaned up, but these lings, they just weren't enough of them. Now Brenda and her friend, I don't know what other names people use for queens, they get run over. Reinforcements are coming in from the top side for the Terran. They're gonna. Oh god, these Marines got bursted by the Banes. No, there aren't a lot of Banes here. And Mechanics just have to GG. That was GG. That was fucking.
fun to cast, I gotta say. Okay. So who have I got next to cast? Next, who is next? Who is next? Firebird and Tossadar. Okay, just discussing a bit what server we're gonna pop, go on for Tossadar versus Firebird. I need to take a break for a minute. So I will be right back.
Okay, I am back. Where is Firebird? <clears throat> Firebird is missing. Wonderful. Underbar. Okay, um, so Tossadar, 4.7k Protoss, um, I th I've seen him on the ladder a few times, I don't remember what he plays though, because I have dog shit memory. Yeah, I was right, I have played him quite a bit. <laughs> I just can't remember the life of me, what he plays. Mm. Which is annoying, because, like... He probably remembers what I play, so he can just counter me so easily. <laughs> It seems we're playing first match on Americas rather than Europe, even though I said it in the frickin' server. So in the server, hey, let's go first game Europe, because I need a small break, and I mean, I'm already here, so it'll speed things up, but no! No! That isn't how they wanted to do things. There's a Platinum Hero player. Where is Tossadar at? Here we go. That sucks, running into four 5Ks when you're all, what, is 4.5K? 4.4K. Okay.
So, it's going to be a TVP. Let's have a look. Yeah. So, I feel we should get a good match. Good series. Death Aura. I love Death Aura. Death Aura is just such a... I'm so comfortable on that map. So used to playing it. I think I just always am really happy whenever I get to play the maps that have been in the pool the longest. <laughs> because I love... I like the familiarity of it. So this is the last series of the Elite uh, round of eight. It's all been best of fives. It's been really long. I've been cursing for almost four hours. Three and a half. Same shirt. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> this is the fourth and final series of the Destiny Star League Round of Eight Elite. It, in the top left, representing, I don't remember who, no, he's an ARG EJ, European Junior. Archangel with the teal Protoss pieces. A lad I've faced many times on ladder. I can't remember for the life of me what he does. He's here. He's fearsome. He's ready to fight. It's Tossadar. And his opponent in the bottom right representing the Platinum Heroes clan, which, if you don't know, they have a Discord for anyone diamond and below. To get free coaching, wonderful community. It is the pinkish Terran player, Firebird. Yeah, so. I can't say anything about Tossadar. I've played him so many times, but I just don't remember. <laughs> because my memory is weak. Weak source. Um, I feel he's a fairly standard player, though. I'd remember if he was cheeky. That's a weird wall he's built. I'm not sure if I like it or not. Mm. It'll let him get a shield battery in the middle of the line, which is always nice. Just being cheeky with this probe. Oh! <laughs> Getting the kill on it. Very nice. Okay, so if he drops the shield battery, yeah, he's just gonna go straight across the map with this adept. And just get whatever damage he can. And try and be as cheeky of a buggery as he can. 
going too adept, I think he might go Stargate. Because you usually go Stargate when you go double adept, because adepts are not good fighting units. Boy, like, because it's shield battery, the Reaper just cannot do anything. Except for those workers that are right there. So you just gotta send both the depths straight across. Cool. So CC's gonna finish off. But there's like nothing here to actually defend it. Yeah, this Reaper's just here. Reaper's just here shooting at them for free. Just slowly draining the shield battery energy. And like now Tossador has two adepts across the map. Okay, he's going straight Phoenixes. I predict Phoenix Colossi. That's what I predict. Okay. Uh, these adepts are actually getting decent damage done to this command center. Could snipe that marine. Like, like they haven't done nothing. They've delayed quite a bit of mining time. Okay, so there's a medevac drop coming in. But all the phoenixes are in the dead space here. Like, all of them. And the Adepts are out on the map. Okay, he's sending one Phoenix out this way now. That's good. So this Phoenix will spot this. And like, this Medivac drop's going to do nothing. Come on. How long till you notice? Okay, he notices now. Mine's come in. Pro pull. It exists. One mine drops in the main. No, only killing two probes. That's actually really lucky. Only five workers go down. That could have been so much worse. But now, Firebird does know that this is... Um, Stargate play with Phoenixes. Phoenix Colossi is what it's going to be. I was right. Oh, that, that phoenix, that's such an annoying thing when the rallies just go weird like that and they take so much damage. Okay, so this push, gonna have concussive shell and plus one attack. There aren't gonna be any upgrades for the toss. Um, it's just gonna be Stargate units and Colossi. Okay, picking off a mine before the push even hits is nice. Now there is one shield battery here. Why does that stalker keep going forward? That's weird. Okay. 
some units get lifted into a medevac. Phoenix is going to move to chase that. Um, I'm not I'm going to be pulled back, actually. This energy, this shield battery is out of energy. This army movement is really weird from Tossador. Oh, is that shield battery is dead. That Colossi is even more dead. Oh, just barely. This is push is being held. But this rock is coming in and like there's nothing here. Phoenix is gonna come in and just lift everything though. Like literally everything all at once. Yeah, good. I mean I don't really like this position for Firebird, like Tossadar's getting tech, he's getting units, he's got a high-tech army, and like, Firebird isn't really getting anything done. This push has done nothing. But more medevac drops with mines and stuff. This is very similar to the style that I've heard Maru would play against this. Where he just constantly drops and like, yeah, lots of them do get cleaned, do get cleaned up by the Phoenix. But like, if one or two gets through, the Phoenix player is just ruined. Just fucked. Because my mine drops are just so deadly. So fast. I find it hilarious when like, m mines like hit random shit and kill it. <laughs> Like the observer just died. It got hit and it just up and died. So two drops going down at once. A uh, mine drop to the third, a mine drop to the fourth, and a normal drop with two mines to the main. Ten drops go down. Ten probes go down in the third. More going off in the natural and the main. Meanwhile, the toss is trying to do a big push at the third of the town player. Mine hits actually kill off so much of the phoenix. Like almost completely dead. One Colossal, I guess, focused down by this just massive amounts of Marauders and reinforcements are just non-existent. 18 workers going down, 28 workers going down for Tossadar. Like, wow. GG. So we're going to stay on America's for the next game. Ooh. I need to play in a tournament. Tournament play is so fun. Okay, let's get ready to rumble.
starting to get a bit late into the cast, and I am starting to get tired. <laughs> like, I cannot speak as much as I could before. I just can't, like, think of as much to say, I feel. Ooh. <sighs> Bloody hell. It's been fun, though. Mm. It's like Phoenix Colossi, cool style, high tech units, really fun. Okay. It's why I like Toss. Oh, no, it's only like it's the techie race, it's really fun. Like, the, the race is just cool, it exudes cool to me. Okay, so I think we're going to see the same kind of play. Yeah. Unless, unless this adept's just going to force the Reaper to move away till the shield battery is done. No. Bunker will be finished this time, I think. More marines have been built before the reactor started, so this is going to be easier to defend for Firebird. Good adjustment. Between matches. Alright, this is the sign of a smart player. A player who, like, either remembers things or looks at the replay for a moment and, like, knows how to adjust to what their opponent has done. Because like, if you just do the same shit every game, it's not going to go well for you. Oh, damn, four worker kills for free from these two adepts. So nice. Okay, this is interesting. An oracle start. It's gonna make it easy to get scouting. Those adepts didn't actually try and go into the main at all. Gonna delay that third CC, that's nice. It's a nice, easy SCV pick off. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're gonna see the same kind of play from Tossadar. Except just with the Oracle this time. That's the first unit. Okay, line drop coming in. Gonna fly over the main and drop. Drop two mines. One of them gets a shot off, the other one gets picked up before it can do anything. 
Third one will burrow. No mark. No probe pulse. And so nine probes go down in total. That's painful. That's really painful. Hmm. And then um, eight marine drop. I'm gonna go just right past these phoenix. Toss it. I didn't actually notice. But yeah, we'll have more phoenix colossi. Uh, some worker ass getting done. There's not actually an awful lot on the ground for Tossadar. Like, most of his army is those Phoenixes. So this mine, Marine Drop is going to be a little hard to deal with without them. But uh, these Phoenix are going to come. Everything's going to get cleaned up pretty nicely. <sighs> so, game's in a kind of even state. Firebird's going to have a decent push with Stim and Combat Shields. I don't know if armor will be done in time. Oh, well, those two Ravens are going to be just incredibly useful versus the Colossi. Tostar should have one and a half Colossi done by the time they get there. So... He's gonna, like, Firebird's gonna have a good push, but it's not gonna be undefendable for Tostar. So this is... How the game progresses is gonna come down to how the push goes. Like, how much harass Tostar can get in. Ooh. And if these mine drops do anything before the push happens. Hmm. That's wrong, it seems like. Well, it seems like Fiber. Ooh, losing, losing that Raven's nasty. You really want that Raven to help deal with the Colossi. Single mine drop heading out to the third. So this should be cleared up pretty quick. But this is just going to really. Pull away the attention. Ah, oh, seven workers though. That shouldn't have got any damage. Should have got single probe. Ooh, this is just not fun. That's a nasty bit of damage. Gonna put them on even workers. Two interference matrices do come out. Um, so only one of these colossi is gonna be good for this fight. The army control though is a bit lacking for Tossadar. The Phoenix are nowhere to be seen. They could be really used to pick up the tanks and mines here. Bio going to push forwards. Tank unseaging. 
But these Colossi are just stood in the back, able to get so much damage. One of them almost, almost killed. Actually killed. Another one's going to be killed as well. Tossadar, where was the micro? <laughs> oh, this is a cute move. Gonna just move the mine over here to deny a, an expansion attempt at this base. I like it. Okay, he spots that mine drop in good time. A six health medevac. And this medevac just gets away for free. <laughs> and my medevac just comes in and just immediately gets shot down. It gets like one mine out. That's just funny to me. It gets a single mine out and it just gets shot down. Okay, so plus two isn't quite done yet, but they're already starting the engagement. Tossadar really needs to wait for the plus two attack to be done. Um, there aren't a lot of Vikings here though, there are more Phoenixes than Vikings, but the Phoenixes are really low health. So we'll see. Ghosts are still production, so these Archons soon might have a bit of difficulty. Now, uh, there isn't any Observer with this army. Mine Shots is going to kill off a lot of these Phoenixes. And soon these mines are going to be replenished, so we will be able to get shot off. So, this push didn't really do an awful lot. Honestly, that's an Orbital Command. That's low DBM. <laughs> that's a ballsy move, having a... Orbital Command is your fourth base. Oh, Medivac drop gonna just run right on top of the Protoss army. Ghost is gonna try and get EMPs off. Mine's gonna start to do that thing. Liberators in production. Liberator, Ghost, Viking, Bio is what we're looking at for the Terran with some mines sprinkled in. Now, there isn't any blink. Okay, good usage of this ramp here by the Toss. The ramp's very hard for the Terran to push up against this army. So it just gets to kill off the uh, Sensitar for free and then like the Terran tries to engage into this but like, all the splash just melts the Terran army. Mines are gonna get shots off. Uh, all the liberators are dead. There's no Protoss detection. You know. Okay. So, I think Tossadar can win here if he plays this right. But lo losing the prism like that really slows down this push. Really takes away a lot of its power. So yeah, he's just going to have to back off. He's actually going into disruptors now. Off a single robo. War, War prism has already been rebuilt. All before it died. Hmm. <laughs> Okay.
Oh, that medevac drop, that went dangerously close to those stalkers. If, if Tosidar had realised, he could have, like, blinked under it and just killed it immediately. Okay. Now, Liberators are really difficult for Protoss to deal with, but there are only a few of them right now. We'll miss Rally on that Disruptor. Colossi moving a bit ahead of the army. What I'd love to see here is I'd love to just see a big warping of Stalkers and then just collapse on the army. Just like move across here and just kill off the this base. Yeah, just like this. Now these Colossi deal a lot of damage and just focus fire the Liberator. Oh uh, yeah. Marauder Drop got quite a bit of damage here, but it's going to be cleaned up by the Zealot Warping. We still have no detection for the Protoss army. We've got an Oracle, that's it. Second Robo just starting, as well as DT Shrine. Two extra Starports in production. So I really like Tosadar's position. Like, he has a strong economic lead, he has map control, but this is a very difficult position to play, because he has to really keep the aggression very high and very constant, and it's a difficult army to fight against, but he needs to fight against it, otherwise he's going to get more liberators and get more high tech and become impossible to fight against. I'd really, I'd really like to see him kill off these rocks because you really want big open spaces against liberators. Okay. Okay. You're not going to engage up there. Oh, we do have detection now. That's lovely. These two mines are still here. Um, okay. Protoss army gonna go in. Colossi are gonna get killed off. Nice disruptor hit. Gets quite a few units. Two Stargates. A fleet beacon have started. Um... Ooh. Just prepping that run by, very nice. Gonna move into the third base of the Terran. And when the Bioforce gets pulled away, gonna send in the harassment? Question mark? Yes. Perfect. There are two mines here that will be able to help clean up quite nicely. Using disruptors to zone. Getting actually a fair bit of damage with these disruptors though. I mean, just giving free space to kill the third as well. Oh, but massive surround by the Terran player. Gonna get a, just a flank from both sides and gonna absolutely decimate this army. All of the high-tech units are now just gone. They are just gone. There are four disruptors. There'll be six by the time this counter-attack hits. If he wants to. That was just beautiful. Beautifully set up by Firebird. This mine is just waiting. I love this. This mine is just waiting for like a big probe transfer to just like come to one of these mineral patches and then just get a massive shot off and like boom. <laughs> Goodbye 20 workers. Okay. Big push coming into the sixth base. No? Fifth base of the Protoss. Lots of workers here getting a good position. I actually think Firebird, if he moved a bit more quickly, he could really push in here and set up Liberators to cover all this green zone. Mine shot's gonna deny that disruptor shot. These disruptor shots need to be incredible. Ghost just dropping on top of the Protoss army. I don't even know what the plan is. 
That's just a fancy move. And Firebird takes the second game. Oh. Absolutely lovely game. So much action. Pillars of gold, sweet, sweet gold. Okay. Firebird, despite being lower MMR, has been playing a really great TVP so far. Keeping up the pressure when he could. That surround last game was incredible. I didn't even see it coming. All right. In the top right corner, representing uh, Archangel Europe Junior Division, it is the Teal Protoss player. You need to take it back because it's a match point for his opponent. It is Tossadar. In the bottom left, representing the Platinum Heroes Clan, the Pink Terran player. <laughs> Firebird. Firebird. So this could be the last game of the series. If Firebird wins this. I'd love to see Firebird do something super aggressive. Because Tossadar's going to be so on edge right now. So nervous. Because he's got to win three games in a row. Three games in a row. Otherwise he loses. Kicked out. Excuse me. So, t just taking advantage of that position that Tossadar's in to just play something really aggressive. Um, that you have to play really crisp against. Giving him just no opportunity to mess up. And like, if it doesn't go well, you've still got two games to play. You can just play standard after that and win. But like, Tossadar has to change it up. Yeah, going for the Stalker, I think he's going to do Twilight play now. Build orders! <laughs> oh, I know how builds work. <laughs> 
Firebird is completely ready for the double adept play. But it ain't coming. Gonna be either a Hellion drop or a Hellion Reaper poke to get some information, followed by a mind drop. That's what I believe is happening. Reaper's just gonna come in. It's gonna get to see this Twilight play. So he gets just a bunch of information here and should get out alive as well. This this stalker movement isn't quite on point. So, it's gonna be Hellions and Liberators. This is actually looking like a t Terran vs. Zerg build, which I find kind of funny. Like. Okay. Tossadon, not gonna be going for the. Uh, Colossi play this game, just staying on three gas. It's interesting. But he doesn't actually have his uh, natural wall finished. So these Hellions are just going to go through. This Observer won't actually spot them. Uh, I spotted them just barely. But using both of those warpins here, then the Liberator is going to come in. He's going to have to pull units. And if Tossadar isn't completely mindful. Okay, here we go. This is a good play by Tossadar. And he's pulling. Here we go. Here's the mistake that Firebird is hoping for. Tossadar pulled everything to the natural to deal with these Hellions that got in. And the Liberator just getting five kills. Having free range in the main, forcing such a big probe pull. And then the Hellions getting damage in the natural, I, this is not a good position for Tossadar. He needs to make something happen. Okay, we've got four gates out of our teal Protoss player. So, there's going to be a blink into the main. Firebird's ready for this though. He's got a tank, going to... He needs to get into a good position. He's got a bunker going up in the natural. An observer got killed, bro. <coughs> I'm gonna pounce right on that tank with the stalkers. Gonna then gonna kill off the bunker. Firebird should be able to figure out there is an observer in his main though. It's Tossadar killing off the Raven. Good stalker, my bro. SCV pull gonna be able to help buffer quite a bit these marines, but these stalkers getting a lot of damage now. Tank gonna get jumped on again. Didn't move them far back enough. Firebird really needed to keep those tanks far back. But all the boys being pulled now, absolutely all of them. Now marines are still good units, and there are quite a few marine cysts getting stimmed, chasing down these stalkers. Firebird's on 14 workers. If he can stabilize, he has three bases to two. And he has orbital commands. So he is actually still kind of even economically. And Tostar has invested a lot in this. But is this Stalker Micro, right? These Stalkers just get so much value. Another tank is being finished though. If this tank is put in a good spot, 
Firebird can hold. Don't don't let it get sniped again, Firebird. Learn from your mistake. Second base did get killed, but there we go. Tank's in a good spot. It cannot be sniped. Firebird's gonna call GG though. He had three workers left. <laughs> Kinda missed that. Okay, so <laughs> I don't play Terran. I don't. Uh, I don't play this build either. So I don't know. I have to trust the players that play this. Mm, Juggernaut. Was Juggernaut vetoed? I feel it was. Yeah. Oxide was oxide vetoed. Let's just double check. Yeah. Oxide is fine. Okay, I was, I feel that was close, like, Firebird did play that well, and if Tossadar's Blink Stalker Micro wasn't on point, he would have won, Tossadar would not have won that, if he didn't have the Stalker Micro. Because marines are good units. Um, so we may well see the Protoss reverse sweep. And that would be exciting.
Okay. So... I don't know if Tossadar's gonna want to do the exact same build again or not. Because it worked last game. Okay, it just killed his opponent outright. And it isn't an all-in either. Marine just shooting a rock while getting bullied by the adept. That's like, this is something you have to respect about the StarCraft units, it's just their commitment to following orders. Like, they will do whatever the fuck you tell them to, even if it means they die. Like, just respect for that level of commitment to following what you have been told. They are, like Vikings, they are not afraid to die at all. So, I'm gonna be a 4-3 Hellion drop. Yeah. But these, these adepts are gonna die now. Bye bye, adepts. So, Iron Drop comes in. This isn't gonna get damage. Yeah. Like, the first Hellion gets killed, then the shield battery does its job. Okay, this is gonna get five, five workers. That's not worth it. That's not enough damage. Um, so, okay. But, this is still going to be a decent position for Firebird, and he's shown us in the past few games that he absolutely is able to keep up. In these longer matches, and he is able to compete and do well. I'll have to see. This tank's going to stop any kind of... Yeah. Tossadar can't really do anything, so this, this Raven's gonna get a chance to get some damage with some missile turrets. Or uh, auto turrets, I mean. Although the observer will spot it, so... A few stalker warpins to stop any damage from being done. I say that, but the shield battery runs out of energy. <laughs> so, damage does get done. Only eight marines. That is not a lot at all for Firebird. Kind of letting his macro slip a bit.
So, Protoss upgrades are kind of light, especially compared to the Terran upgrades. Ooh, but this push... I don't know, this push could be really dangerous. Like, there is not a lot on the ground for Terra. This aggressive push. They're coming, like, so many zealots here, just gonna overrun these tanks. And then just going straight on to kill the army and go into the main. Now, there is a mine drop heading out to the Protoss' main base. Workers are starting to fall now for the Terran. These two mines getting in good mine pull or pro pull though. One mine does get killed before anything can be done about it. So, Protoss either has to break the Terran here, or he has to somehow tech up to some form of splash damage. Because, otherwise, the Terran is just gonna keep building up the Maroon count, and gonna eventually overrun the lower tech Protoss army. But there are a lot of Zealots here. So he's just gonna settle for. Tosadar's just gonna settle for containing onto base and going to double Robotech. Quite possibly Colossi. Maybe disruptors. I wouldn't mind a single disruptor being built just to take pot shots at this army. Okay, Terran Army is going to try and make a move out, but it's going to just end up losing a bunch of workers. Um, so now it's a 33 worker Terran. All the boys are being pulled, he's actually going all in. Like, there are no workers left. So this is actually going to be really dangerous for the Protoss. Because he has no form of splash damage. This is such a low-tech army, and there is just so much here. Like, there are two Archons. That is splash damage. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is all we have. Mines come in, get sieged up. Tank siege as well. And shield battery overcharge is useful. The two Archons die so fast, they don't even get a do much. There are a few Stalkers here, to be, but there's not much else to be able to deal with the Liberator. Everything gets pulled away. This is completely all in by the Terran, so if Tossadar can just delay, like any economy for the Toss is more economy than there is for the Terran right now. If he can just delay, get out some Colossi, get out more gateway units. More Stalkers means more anti-air. Okay, he's got two... Colossi out now, and now he's going to try and take this engagement. Zealots get just absolutely melted by the Widow Mines, but two tanks firing from the high ground and Liberators pop, make it really hard to engage here. And even though there's 46 workers, the natural and main are almost completely mined out for the Protoss, so there's almost no economy anyway. Two Archons being morphed. Might see a third. I'm gone. This is... There's just so much here for the Terran. And this is just such a hard position to engage into. Because the Mines and the Liberators are just brutal units. You really want big amounts of units coming from all sides to deal with this. The Protoss simply does not have that amount of units. He's going to try another engagement. He's going to get off. He's going to kill off one Liberator. Widow Mine's getting lots of damage onto the Zealots. 
All of the Liberators are dead now. These Colossi are very low on health, though. Stalker count has been reduced quite a bit. The Zealot count is non-existent. These mines are going to be killed before they can siege up. Lots of Marauders here. Very good against this Stalker Zealot Colossi army. One tank did get killed, but it's no, actually, it just unsieged and moved forwards. Firebird has no economy. At all. Tostar's slowly warping in Zealots, hoping to be able to eventually overwhelm with the fact that he has an economy. <laughs> um, Zealots and Stalkers coming in now. Stalkers going to jump on top of these tanks. And that is finally going to be cleaned up. Tossadar. Well done, lad. That last engagement, that could have gone either way. That was such a di that's such a difficult position to play. We just barely, barely s managed to pull it off in the end. Oh, you can see, like, so many workers lost for Firebird. That was because they were all in the fight. And Tossadar lost almost all his army. Well, he lost, like, half his army. Almost. Wow, these last two series turning out to be absolutely killer. So much action. It's hype. I am loving this. I hope you lot are as well. This is going to be the last game of the last series of the round of eight elite bracket. This has been a very good finish to this round of eight. Good games, lots of action. Lots of very quick talking. It almost feels like I could be a rapper. <laughs> okay. Final map, final series, last game, let's go! Right, last game, the, the game that just happened. That was eventful. That was, that was very close, that was a very decisive and ballsy decision by Firebird to just go for that SCV pull. Mm. I like this. He's pr the fake proxy racks last match. Gonna set your gonna make your qu opponent question what's going on. I dig it.
So yeah. When this fake proxy racks just forces out this zealot. Oh, this SCB gives it away. Like, Tosdar's gonna check here now and then can just cancel the zealot. Oh, come on. Right there. It's right there. No. Okay, he's seen it. He, he cancelled the zealot. But his nexus is so late. Like. So Proxy Rax has done some ex economic damage, even though it's a fake Proxy Rax. That's exactly what Firebird wanted. And Tosadar's build is a bit thrown off. Second unit is nowhere, warp gate is nowhere, tech is nowhere. Floating... Some gas. And the Terran natural is actually going to be finished before the Protoss natural is. Okay, so it's going to be a mind drop into a follow-up three racks push by our Terran. I like this. It's aggressive. It's putting pressure on. I dig it. Um... Okay. Mind drop's coming in. There's only one stalker in the main. Blink isn't quite ready yet. But dropping all three mines into the main base. Actually deciding to pick one up. Ooh, both mines go off. Eight workers killed. Gonna drop into the natural. Mine is gonna get focus fired. That's a good reaction. And Medivac is gonna get killed. But eight workers is not a nice amount to lose. And these mine movements are gonna just tax the multitasking of the Protoss just a little bit. So, the Terran is actually now ahead in workers and doing a solid push. This is gonna be very difficult for Tossador to deal with. But now he's out on the map with the stalkers to try and delay whatever push is going to come. High Templar tech. So that's going to have to be for Archons because this push is going to hit too quick for Storm to ever come into play. Bunker isn't going to get killed. Going to just get chipped away at. Okay, Marines stimming forwards. 
<laughs> pit indecisive by fire, but they're just like stimming forwards and then moving back and forth. Um, what I need is to just keep moving forwards and keep pushing. Okay. Tossa does sort of lost track of the army. Oh. Loading up a medevac full of marines. And a marauder. So this is going to be really difficult for Dossadar to deal with. He's trying to do it the mass gateway method. But against these mines and without charge on hit damage, it's going to be hard. One marine, one's are sent in ahead of the others to soak a mine shot and to try and trigger some friendly damage. All of these mines are only getting hit one zealot. Very good micro by Tossadar. It's going to make this a lot easier to deal with. However, there is a drop in the main, which is getting some damage done. Killed off a pylon, I would think. I'm not sure what it killed off. Zarts are going to be warped in, but they're not going to quite be enough. Good positioning by Firebird with those units. Super Battery's going to have to be popped to save these units out of the third of Tossadar. This push is starting to get cleaned up, but it's still very strong. The economy has equalized just a little bit. Um, but still still in favor of Firebird. Stud almost finished, turning into an orbital command. Now, High Templar is starting to be warped in. I don't know if he's going to make them into... Yeah, straight into Archons. Two Medivacs are going to go straight to the natural of Tossadar. Going to just keep trying to pull apart his Protoss opponent, or Firebird's Protoss opponent. Marauder's gonna stim forwards. Just gonna pick up and leave. There's too much here for these, this small squad of Marauders to deal with. The drop that hit the main returns, drop in the natural. Gonna get a fair bit of damage. Gonna Tostal was trying to do a move out, but he's actually gonna just straight pull back. Firebird pulled back as well from the full move out he was going to try. So this drop is going to get cleaned up for us. 36 workers to 55 now. Firebird is in a strong position. Uh, another Marauder drop. I'm going to be sent off. These drops are just everywhere. This is so frustrating for the Toss player to have to deal with. He really needs to split up his army. Or you can just go all in. Rely on these warpings to clean up this drop and then just hope he can kill. Because it is 31 workers to 58. Tossadar is really behind. But three Archons, two Immortals, this is quite a scary army to be honest. And it is a good timing here for Tossadar to get damage. These mine hits, getting some half decent damage. Observer here to clean them up. Which is not quite enough, so he's going to be able to kill off this third base. He is losing a bunch of workers in the main. So this is actually going to prompt him to just straight try and break the main. Go into the production and kill his opponent outright. Those mine hits are going to scare him off a bit. It's actually a fourth base on the way. <laughs> um, moving into the natural. Meanwhile, Marauder Drop being sent to the third of the Protoss. A new mine sieging up. Going to just be killed off by these stalkers. Good play by both players so far, but Tostar's just in a really weak position here. 17 workers to 38. Three Marauders still running around all the spaces. 
Look, two Liberators starting to siege up, and there's just so much bio and mines here. I don't think Tostar can really do much. Immortal's putting in war. But... Bio outscales... Bio outscales gateway units. And that's it. GG. Firebird takes it home. 3-2. GG's to both players. Thank you very much to everyone who played. That was... That was the end of the Elite uh, round of eight. Lots of action in these last two series. Really fun series. Thank you to everyone who watched. Thanks to all the players. Thank you to Sniper and everyone who helped set this up and get and keeps this tournament running and operating. Remember to sign up for the Matcherino and stuff. Thanks to the sponsors, Berserker Esports is a sponsor. And Matcherino. I have been your host, Wolfsha. I have a Twitter and a Twitch of the same name. Sniper has been the host of the pro side of things on his own Trovo channel. I'm going to say thank you to everyone. I hope you enjoyed and had as much fun as I did. See you all around.